Yo. Every time I listen to this, I'm like, revelation. Seriously, don't, still don't know the difference between the strength, between my strength and my conditioning, guys. First of all, that's so smart because you think of like, you can break it down in so many ways, but even just like the gym timetable, it's like strength or conditioning, right? And it's like our strength versus our conditioning. It's just so good. But I know it's not about the gym, it's about our conditioning and our strength, like strength of mind. And when we change, you know what I'm saying, guys, when you listen to the song, you know when you hear music, 3%, my battery's gonna die. But you know when you hear music and every time, time and time again, it's just such a preach, you're just like, whoa. Revelation after revelation, or just resonance after resonance. So that again feels like a revelation every time. It's like when you see the moon, and every day you're mesmerized. You know that it's gonna look as it does. Um, though we know it, like everything differs every day, but you know to not be shocked, but somehow you are, at least I am when I see the moon. So yeah, this is Water, guys, by Koji Radical, Mahalia and Swindle. It's currently my favorite song. And for me, I break it down and I see it as coming back online, where Mahalia is saying, you know, I didn't know this is what I was coming back to. Um, man, I started a blog when I was in university and the way I would introduce myself was as a storyteller. So back then I always introduced myself as Tasha, but now I definitely go by Natasha. For some reason all my life I just cut out the na and definitely going through a process of stepping into my name, the fullness of my name, which I refer to a lot, um, you know, stepping into the fullness of my name because it was such a huge journey for me. And again, I'm being reintroduced to myself, to different versions of myself. And yeah, it's kind of wild. It's really crazy when you get to see yourself and are able to look back on yourself. I think that's the beauty of social media. We have these online diaries. The fact that I was able to have a blog, I mean, I look back at it and the world right now is so much wider and so much wilder. I was talking in one post, which was, they were juvenile posts now that I read back on them, but still at the time they were really like revolutionary. I was talking about smoking and I was talking about, you know, tattoos, which was still taboo in the workplace. And I was talking about just like how we self-express and stopping people telling, you know, giving people compliments and asking, hey, can I do a photo shoot of you? and ask about, you know, the controversial thing I thought they were wearing or the thing that just told a story that made me want to ask them a question about it. Because I think everything we wear really does tell a story. My sister said something in her interview, which was still again, very simple, but it was quite profound in that simplicity. She said, I think it's not really what I'm actually going to find it. So this is my process. It is basically the afternoon time and I'm eating. Oh my goodness, guys. Long. I actually didn't just make this for camera. <laughs> but then I was like, I'm gonna come on camera and eat this. And yeah, it's bang as a mash because I'm eating mash. Oh shit, she did it again. <laughs> I must say guys, I love plays on words and I love to play with it. It's like when I have an idea, I'm like, I'm just gonna play with it regardless. Regardless of, of, if it, of if it goes somewhere. Now I'm excited. I'm hype. <laughs> but guys, I'm eating mash. And when I was a kid, one of my favorite things to do. Mm, it's so good. I just put a bunch of leftovers together, guys. This is my favorite kind of plate. Which is just soft, smooth, easy to eat. I'm a vegetarian. So I always usually have falafels. Or, guys, I've recently... My new addiction is meatballs. I've been all up in the vegan meatballs, for real. And today, for some reason, I'm not someone who drinks juice boxes or even buys juice for different reasons which I'll break down, and especially not these small ones because of waste. But today I was like, I'm gonna drink a juice box because I had one in the fridge. Mm. It's pear. It's thicker than I thought it would be. It was frozen, so right now, everything that was on the top shelf was frozen. I had to tone that shit down. And 
yeah, so I'm just eating the mash alone, waiting for the rest to, to defrost, and then I'm gonna add some protein to this party. Although I have tons of hummus, yeah, so shout out. Um, but yeah, I I got so distracted about food. Anyway, so this is bangers and mash. That was the banger. But this is my process. So I really like to sit when I'm feeling comforted and nourished. So this is my comfort zone. I'm in my space. I've recently just moved into a new space and setting up space for me is so important. And I live alone again. And I've just come from an experience where I was living in a home with others and I was in a relationship. And it was a really difficult dynamic actually. When you think of all the energies that just exist in one place, we move with our energies, it exists, we gather dust, you know, at the end of the week when you're sweeping, you're like, how did this get here? But dust gathers regardless and it belongs to you and all those around you, right, to come in and out. And I love the notion of taking off your shoes when coming into your house, but that's also something I didn't grow up doing. So yeah, conditioning and learning, strength and conditioning, it's crazy actually. I look at, I look at strength as something so simple. I look at this plate and on here, I have cherry tomatoes and tomatoes are not something I could eat growing up. I had a really traumatic experience eating tomatoes when I was a kid with my, like it was just a really traumatic experience. And I could never eat tomatoes after that, not raw tomato. I mean, I love tomato sauce like ketchup and I loved, always I've loved like tomato on pizza, not fresh tomato though. So when I grew up, and started liking different things. It was such a revela revelation. Going through changes is so beautiful. And when you journal, I do something avidly and it's journal my changes in terms of my eating. Like how am I eating? How am I smoking? How am I, like what tea am I drinking? I went through a phase of drinking cacao regularly. I went through a phase of drinking green tea, which strengthened my skin so much. Um, and then ginger tea for a time for my gut. And so, I go through these phases and I love to write them down and how they're actually helping me and what's been effective, what positively impacts me and what doesn't. I've kind of been off my game for the last few months and when I'm in my own space living alone, I'm at the height of my own self-care because I can see myself, everything around me is mine. All the mess, everything, it belongs to me or it belongs to someone that I have invited over and that I've allowed into my space so then I can only be upset with my own boundaries, you know? Um, yeah, this plate of food reminds me of the simplicity. I would be a kid and man, I would eat just plain rice, just like plain dishes were my favorite thing. So when I grew up and turned into like turned vegetarian, it just made so much sense for me because I was never a huge meat lover. I really loved like sauces and dips and then discovering proteins in different ways. So I'm still on my journey to perfectly perfect my own diet, but Definitely I eat when my body's hungry. I don't stop myself from things except meat, obviously. But that's the thing, yo, these vegan meatballs. I didn't for a long time have vegan replacements at all. But I was craving meat and meatballs just, actually they were on sale one day. And then I was like, damn, I like me these meatballs. <laughs> mm -hmm. It died. I was gonna read what my sister had written. Anyway, basically she wrote that, I don't think necessar it necessarily matters what you wear every day, but it does, you know, people are always gonna look at you and the first thing they see is what you wear. Before really coming cl super close to you, I mean, I'm going, I'm expanding into this, but before coming close, before people can see the details, they see what you wear and it does hold an aura, it does hold an energy. And I'm not someone who like cares too much, but I stopped caring so much that I really let myself go. And I learned a lot about self-care in the letting go of necessities, of makeup, of just my whole journey was, I was doing this blog and I was learning from a lot of people that, wow, we've really been so policed in the way that we dress and even in the way that we answer the questions. People are not so comfortable being on camera and I so get that because the internet is a mean place and things exist forever and I myself went off of it and have been away for a while or I come on as like a ghost, you know, and I just observe, observe, observe. But something that I really have always noticed is just like the, the fear that people have, policing ourselves. I watched this Instagram video of Kanye today where he was saying, 
uh, you know, people obviously judging him being like, wake up, Mr. West. And then he's like, his rebuttal is kind of like, wake up world, you know, we're still policing the way that we dress, the way that we do things. There's no rules to be followed. And it's about like mashing things up. That was the whole thing. It was either going to be mash up or like bangers and mash. But it's going to, I'm going to mix it up. That's the thing, guys. I have so many ideas and I just have to start. I feel the most creative when I, like I said, I'm nourished when I'm in a clean environment. Even if it's messy with my things, um, if I'm using them, then it's great. I feel great when I'm around food. <laughs> you know what? Scratch that. I feel great when I'm around flavors or even scents. I can be so essentially just activated by just like having a good meal around me, having a good drink to drink, having smells around me that entice me or music around me that just like is enjoyable, but definitely food. So I'm going to be inviting people on here. We'll be eating and discussing things, discussing all the bangers that we're listening to. Hey, bangers are magic. Because I love the idea. The more I say it, the lamer it gets, but you got to just stick to your ideas you know what I mean um, and even if you don't attach to them it's just like stick with it go for it and you never know what comes of it even if it's just so much joy in the future watching yourself back like I love laughing at myself and being like oh you were so silly or like that's so funny or that's so embarrassing but I no longer feel embarrassment I really un like undid myself of these shackles of embarrassment because what the hell is shame for real there's certain things where I think privacy and healing need to come from like talking about things that are uncomfortable, sure. But like being ashamed and embarrassed about things, I can no longer hold that weight. It's so, it's so heavy to hold. And I definitely think a space for yourself helps you feel that way because I'm able to self-express and I'm very forgiving to myself. So no one's shouting at me if it's a mess and it's only myself. I'm very hard on myself, but still it's, this creative place where I'm in charge and I have to reparent myself again and again in order to ensure that I keep it clean, I keep it well, like healthy for me to live in and inviting enough to have others because I'm very much like an entertainer. I love to have people over. I love to yeah, just like eat and drink and smoke with people and chat. And we're in trouble when I started my blog. It was meant to be a play on the words. You know the song, uh-oh. We're in trouble, something's come along and it's burst our bubble. I always thought it's blessed our bubble. And I was just like, it's so good when co things come to disrupt the system because it is such a blessing to like this bubble that we've created. And this was kind of the play on words. It was like what we're wearing and how it gets us into trouble, where we're going and how it gets us into trouble. Like man, people used to have IDs to get into certain areas, you know, segregated. I grew up in South Africa, I'm currently in Lisbon and it's crazy. Anyway, that's a whole different topic that we're going to talk about. But yeah, the way that we wear things based on our gender, sexuality, profession, it varies in the way that people, you know, receive us changes. Um, and I really wanted to explore that. So yeah, that's what I did. And then my spiritual awakening really got me out of, of that. Mm, guys, you know when you just got... Mm, so good imagine we just had virtual dinner parties because now i'm like this is rude but i'm like this is the best time to find me creative if i'm not making a video now i'm not gonna make it so ah uh, guys i wrote something beautiful today angels have no money and still have so much power i think another thing i was definitely fearing was talking about god and just like you know when you find a new part of God, like where God says, yes, being beautiful and being wealthy is not selfish. It's like my gift to the world. We're all meant to receive. You know, God is like this limitless man. His angels, they're not broke, but they have no money. You know what I'm saying? It's incredible how powerful, how magical, miraculous things are. Wow. Hush. Hush, slow down. Say the names of those whom your candle, for whom your candle burns. Say them into the attentive ear of memory or of God. Oddly, now either one will do. You are no longer required to believe. Receive the gift of listening. Belief is as hard as a hickory nut that cracked.
holds many mansions. The faces that you loved are chalices. Hush, slow down. Tip the chalice, sip the wine and say it. All that I remember now are mine. That is beautiful. Yesterday I just supported, well, I was just there when a friend heard about his grandmother's passing and to talk of death is so difficult every time. Hush, slow down. Say the names of those for whom your candle burns. Say them into the attentive ear of memory or of God. Oddly now, either one will do. You are no longer required to believe. Receive the gift of listening. Belief is as hard as a hickory nut that, cracked, holds many mansions. The faces that you love are chalices, hush, slow down. Tip the chalice, sip the wine, and say it. All that I remember now are mine. Wow. <sighs> Beautiful. Another thing I started doing in my spiritual awakening, so I started to get away from, or I started to kind of have trends of, and this talks about trends, right? So I would see trends online and try them out myself, or I'd be intuitively called there. So online, we're told, try this out, you know, beauty trends, different hacks. And I was just like, I don't resonate with those. I was, I grew up very accustomed to a white culture, so I would always straighten my hair, blow dry my hair. I relaxed my hair when I was in grade seven at first and no one knew, right? It was this big secret that I kept and I just had to like, my identity was very meshed up in what the society kept wanting to be, right? So it's like women with straight hair and then like the era, even like J-Lo being beautiful and then like Latin, like people would confuse me for different things. Most people thought I was Indian and they really believed it. So you know that song, Masego? I thought she was Indian. Like, I was so disappointed because I didn't have the hair. Like, I just didn't have, you know, Indian hair is so, to me, the most, it's so thick and just beautiful. When I look at the beauty trends that I follow, it's kind of more Ayurveda and it's Amla oil and it's things that either, you yeah, definitely like within Asia have we been taught. And so I grew up in South Africa and I didn't know about my hair or how to take care of it. Still, I'm learning. It's on, guys, I wear braids all the time because I'm still learning. But even then, I couldn't really talk about it. I couldn't myself have these conversations. It was so taboo and awkward and uncomfortable. And even for my friends around me, I remember being in school and a guy said to my friend, literally guys, at this after party, he says, you know, I want to kiss Tasha, but like, I just want to make sure that she's white. Like, is she, you know, and is she just, is it just that she's very tanned? And I had this passing privilege all my life that was so uncomfortable. Like, so even talking about it, that's the thing. I used to have so much shame. And then it's like, you take that power that shame has away and you're actually just like, well, these are really fucked up experiences that exist in the world and that people actually say and think. And back when I started the blog, no one was, you know, like I'm, I had a blog, I had a podcast called Puff Puff Pass, and so I was opening conversations up to smoking. And something that then happened was I had an extended leave of absence from my university. So it was very ironic, and I was kind of this big joke to myself in my own head, right? Like I couldn't finish my university. I was so burnt out. The real story was that I was really burnt out, and I had this intense spiritual awakening that manifested itself in this physical very, very physical symptoms, which I'm gonna get into into another video. But yeah, I wanted to start talking about the cultural experiences that were happening and how deep they meant they were for self-expression. And then what that did, it was, it accelerated kind of my purpose was, it's not just about what we're wearing, it's about like how we're wearing them, you know, the colors. And man, I wear, I wear colors now according to my chakras. And, oh, I'm getting a phone call. I wear colors according to my chakras and I understand that the materials I wear have an impact on me. I recently, not recently, but I've spoken about this before, but I learned that, you know, every material carries a vibration and a frequency. And so then we will resonate with that. It's the same as with crystals. I really believe in all these, oh, excuse me. I really believe in all these things. I started to read tarot and oracle cards and I've now moved away from them because my whole belief system has changed. But all along the way, 
every little bit of thing I did was almost like a, just really, it was a portal. And when you just use your own discernment, these things can be really powerful and forgiving in the end when you let go of them and say goodbye. So I'm now having the process of letting tarot go. I haven't read tarot in ages and I've stopped watching tarot videos, which for a while I was really, really into. Um, but now I just see it as like, your world is a vision board, your home is a vision board, your environment, the things that we consume and that we choose to have in our lives, they are our vision board. And then that must mean ourselves, we are a vision board. And so oh, there's so much to be said about it because it's also a luxury to look the way that you want and to feel the way that you want, even if it's simple things, even just to have good soap and like underwear, you know, these things kind of empower you and dignify you or they can kind of undignify you. They can make you feel undignified. And we're living in a world where products are so expensive, man. And also they're bad for us. We're soaking in these things that are so bad for us. For a time I stopped using all products, everything. And all I used was coconut oil and rose water. And I must say I've never felt more beautiful. I wasn't wearing underwear at this time and I was riding a bicycle while I lived in Vietnam. And I didn't even have a SIM card and I've never felt and been more beautiful in my life. Um, but it's not sustainable. And that kind of life where you have to move, you, you must, you know, we must take these things and then adapt them. And so, yeah, that's where, you know, I look at myself as this common chameleon and how, in, how having to adapt to different environments means also we kind of camouflage ourselves sometimes but sometimes it is the camouflage that is the beauty. You know, like, it's like you have all these things. You know when you're like looking, I recently went to the zoo and you know when you're looking into like the reptiles, you know, places and you're looking, where are they? Or you're looking into just like whatever you're looking for, right? The terrarium, are they called? Anyway, and you're looking, looking, looking and you just look up and there's the snail. <laughs> and... It's crazy because uh, that's kind of what it's like with your talent and your skill set. Sometimes you think you're doing one thing and then you're actually discovering another. Um, yeah, so that was the journey of we're in trouble and the play on words. And it's now taking me on such a spiritual journey. And yeah, it's also taking me really fun. Like I, I love, like I said, <laughs> just... I was making playlists and sharing them. So that's what, I, that's what we're going to talk about. All the songs that I'm really resonating with. Also the songs that inspired me. When I was, so this was a third year project, but when I was in my second year of university, I had such a crush on this guy who I ended up having a thing with, you know, for a little while. And still very juvenile stages. And he loved, loved, loved reggae. So, and he was smoke, he was a smoker. So I would, so I remember the one day I was sitting down the path of his residence and I sat with my friend trying to smoke. Guys, even this, you know, eating tomato, being able to smoke and roll up, these things that I was not able to do. You know, I was, I had to learn all these skills and I never thought I'd be this person. They were t it was taboo to be this person. And then I learned, oh shit, I really am this person who smokes, right? Mm. And just is a bit more expressive and still good and kind and has no ill intentions. Like I'm still very shy and have my things. That's why I love my space alone. Like I'm an introvert. And so it's easy to come record on camera when I know no one's listening around me, right? Um, and to be able to temper my nervous system when I then post it, look away and then just be like, cool, it's done. And that's beautiful. Whoever comes upon it, we just hope it's met with grace and a generosity of ears. And if not, then if you don't like what you see, don't look. Hey. Um, yeah, so the songs were So Much Trouble in the World. I was listening to that a lot. And those lyrics, you see, I would be searching all these things on my phone and my laptop. I could have charged in this time, but alas. Here we are. And other songs. I've been listening a lot to Who Knows. I've been listening a lot to... Mick Jenkins all the time, The Waters all the time. And a lot of Mortimer, Oof, I love Mortimer. For like love reggae songs, I love him. And whenever I'm going through heartache, I used to not listen to love songs and now I listen to them even more, just manifesting 
heart repair you know it doesn't have to be sad and we're all gonna experience love and love again um yeah anyway so that's we're in trouble and it's also like the things that we have to say they can get us into trouble you know even this so many people don't know about this and when they do i'm like oh even like you know when your family finds out that's probably my biggest fear but also the biggest excitement because i just want to be supported and not shut down i think i had so many small little ideas shut down because they're not professional they're not super well done or they're just so me and they're taboo that they don't come across well they don't present well to you know the modern society and the matrix but it's just me and it's who i am and i want to have conversations about it because even this for me is my own personal revolution so yeah those are the songs and i'm gonna link some more i'm thinking frankie stew and harvey gunn because i love them what other songs i've been listening to mm. i suppose i want to say right now is definitely a moment for music like Nicki minaj obviously miley we're releasing these big songs after a long period of time i think it's like we felt this energy gain momentum and now people are releasing a lot of music that's kind of hitting the spot for a lot of people but i must still say oh, i want to talk more about the spirituality of music because what i that to me what i resonate because those are not songs that i've been like jamming to or vibing with necessarily but i definitely can say that they come at a moment of time where energetically they're just supported and i'm like damn these people are aligned you know what i'm saying so yeah working with tara the moon all these things taught me more about alignment and having a space to myself teaches me that as well like everything is your vision board we are our own vision boards and sometimes they get us into trouble sometimes you want to keep them to yourselves you know what i mean you don't want to show everyone your display but yeah this is kind of my little snippet of a video diary and a moment in time a thing that's going to be history one day for real like one day my kids are going to watch this and be like mom that was you oh my gosh that was such bad quality or something but let's see maybe my kids are going to be really kind like oh mom that's dope i love you <laughs> let's see i hope my kids are super loving and they will be for sure but yeah so that's me on space and time the time right now it's again i'm gonna keep it to myself but it is the nine it's the eight it's the seventh it's the seventh of um what do you call it why am i not saying the time that's so weird it's 3 12. <laughs> okay and it is the seventh of september it's 7 11 a it's not 7 11 it's definitely 7 9 Now people are going to be like, it's because you're high. This was always my fear. Um, but you know when you're just in a moment and you drift? Yeah. It's probably because I'm high. 